Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And again, this is week number 11 of our Access Road series. We've entitled Grace. And we're bringing this series to a close this week. So we're trying to tie up some loose ends. First of all, give you the big picture of the great exchange. And of course, the great exchange only occurred because of the grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this fits right perfectly in our study on grace because you can't just talk about what grace is. You have to talk about really what grace has done for us. That is what God did for us that we could not do for ourselves. And so God already carried that in, uh, carried that out in the, His Son, Jesus, in His death, burial, and resurrection. But yesterday we began talking about the big picture of this great exchange. And of course, we read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. God made his son to be sin for us by substitution, by identification. And you know what? When Jesus identified with us in our sin, when God laid on him the sins of all mankind for all time on, on Jesus, then he treated him like a condemned sinner. Now listen, again, Jesus didn't commit sin. He wasn't on the cross paying the price for his own sin. He was paying the price as our substitute for our sin. So when Jesus was made to be sin for us, then God poured out all of his wrath, the condemnation, the guilt, the shame, the punishment that was due to all of us. He poured it out on his son, Jesus, so that he became sin for us God treated him like a sinner. We have to understand that right there. Okay, that is a reality. I know it's kind of hard for you to imagine that God would treat his son like that. But listen, if God didn't treat his son like that, then all of us would be destined for that same kind of punishment, condemnation. But it wouldn't be for three days and three nights. It would be for an all eternity in hell. And I can tell you, I'm thankful for what God did in His grace. That's why it's amazing grace. So we talked about this yesterday, and we talked about how Jesus, when He became sin for us, He went through the crucifixion. He had to go through the crucifixion and had to suffer on the cross. But when He did that, of course, there had to be a death. The wages of sin is death. There was a sin debt that had to be paid, and Jesus was doing this on the cross. We see Jesus going through the crucifixion, hanging on the cross. We see a picture of our sinful condition and the kind of punishment that was due to all of us. That was that condemning sentence that we've been talking about. Jesus paying that for all of us. But again, because of the grace of God, Jesus identified with us completely, but we can turn around and identify with Him completely right now. And that is good news right there. So Jesus was crucified on the cross. And in that crucifixion, there actually was a death that took place. Jesus was put to death. He entered into death for every single one of us. Now again, there's so many scriptures that we could talk about and go through throughout the new covenant. And I just don't have time to go through all of them because that's really the heart of the gospel, the new covenant is the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus and our identification with Him. But I want to look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Hebrews, the second chapter, verses 14 and 15, it says, Inasmuch then, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, Jesus Himself likewise shared in the same, that through death He might destroy Him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Notice that Jesus entered into death, and that through death, He conquered and overcame death, and He overcame Satan. Now I know when, it, when we read there, it says that, that through death, Jesus might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Sometimes we think, well, He, he destroyed the devil, He no longer exists. Well, He's a spirit being. You, you don't destroy a spirit being that way, but he destroyed his effect in our life. He, is, he destroyed his dominion over us. He destroyed his place of authority over us. The Amplified actually says it this way about that. It says that through death, he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of death that is the devil. Now I want you to see this is past tense. This is not something that's going to happen. 
This is something that happened when Jesus was crucified on the cross and entered into death for all of us. Now, this is not just physical death that we're talking about. This is spiritual death. And, you know, Jesus wasn't just uh, overcoming rig uh, physical rigor mortis here. He was actually overcoming death at its root, and that is a spiritual force. That is a spiritual thing, a root in the spiritual realm. He was overcoming death. Jesus actually entered into the heart of the earth and was incarcerated those three days and three nights, so to speak. He was incarcerated during that time. In becoming a sinner for us, he had to pay the full price. That means the crucifixion, the death, the physical death, the, the separation from God. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He, he was actually suffering under separation from God. That is spiritual death. And he entered into the heart of the earth and was incarcerated during that period of time. He wasn't just hanging out, drinking coffee with Abraham and, and David out there somewhere. He was actually incarcerated during that period of time. For what purpose? So that he could fully pay the price for our sin debt. He could clear out our account. So Jesus did that. He satisfied the claims of justice. He paid the full price of the sin debt of all mankind for all time. And again, when he did that, though, when Jesus fully satisfied the claims of justice and fully cleared out the sin debt out of all of our account, out of mankind's sin account, then 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that's another 316 verse. 1 Timothy 316 tells us that Jesus was justified in the Spirit. Now, why was that? Because he paid the price for it. He paid the price for all mankind for all time. See, again, he wasn't, he wasn't paying the price for his sin. He wasn't paying off that sin debt for, his own, for himself. He was paying the price for all of us. And when he did that, when he fully satisfied the claims of justice against us, fully paid the price and cleared out our account, then 1 Timothy 3.16 says he was justified in the Spirit. Hell could no longer incarcerate Jesus. Now again, think about this. We're in Christ. Because when Jesus was pronounced justified in the Spirit, having loosed us from the claims of justice that were against us, then all of us were set free and justified in the Spirit at the same time. Boy, that is powerful right there. That means Satan can no longer hold you in his prison house. That means that that you can't be brought back under a condemnation, a, a guilt, and a shame because of, for, uh, because of sin, because that would be double jeopardy. It's over and done with. Jesus paid the full price once and once for all. He was justified in the Spirit. We were also justified in the Spirit. Once that happened, First, Tim, uh, first, first Peter chapter 3, verse 18 tells us this, and I'm going to read this. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins. Once. Once for sins. Why? Because it was enough. His price was paid. He said, Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust. The just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Once Jesus paid the price, satisfied the claims of justice, he was justified in the Spirit, guess what happened? God breathed in him once again the life, the eternal life of God Almighty, and that entered into his Spirit. But listen, again, that's us he's also referring to. We were justified in the Spirit. We were made alive together in the Spirit with Jesus at the same time. Everything that Jesus did for us, we did with him. Once that happened, then God raised him from the dead. And you you know, you, you look through particularly the sermons in the book of Acts, the early church, the very foundational sermons of the book of Acts, and just about all of them are centered in on the death, the crucifixion, the burial, he entered into death, and the resurrection of Christ. Now why is the resurrection so important? Why is it so important that we emphasize that Jesus was raised from the dead? Because that is the confirmation. That is the evidence that we have all in Christ been justified and made alive in the Spirit. And see, that's what Romans chapter 4 verse 25 says. 
Romans 4.25 says, in the Amplified Version, this is why this is so important, it reads, who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification. Why was he put to death? Because of our misdeeds, not his. And was raised to secure our justification, our acquittal. So that's a legal term. Making our account balance. I love this. Making our account balance. Clearing out the debt of our account. Making our account balance and absolving us from all guilt before God. Well, if Jesus did this completely and fully, guess what? There is no condemnation, no guilt, no shame should be hanging over your head anymore. This is why when uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, in talking about how we're to be born again, we're to confess Jesus as Lord of our life. We're making Him our Lord and Savior. But it also says that we have to believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead. Why is that? Because we have to believe that Jesus paid the full price for our justification, and because we're in Him, we're also justified, cleared of all, all charges against us, cleared of all debts in our account, cleared of all guilt, shame, and condemnation in our life. Boy, that's powerful. Now listen, that's not the end of it right there. It's not the end just because Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He also ascended into heaven and went into the very presence of God in heaven, into the Holy of Holies. He didn't go into an earthly tabernacle, no uh, a tabernacle built with hands. No, he went in, listen, he went in to the very tabernacle, the Holy of Holies in heaven itself, into the very presence of Almighty God. He went in there as a forerunner for us. Hebrews chapter 6, verses uh, 19 and 20, it says, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Notice, it enters the presence, that's the presence of God. Verse 20, where the forerunner, that's Jesus. He is our forerunner. What is a forerunner? He went before us. He went as a forerunner for us so that we could be brought into the presence of Almighty God. Where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So notice Jesus is doing all this for us. Everywhere that Jesus goes, we go with him. Okay, okay, so let's follow this real quickly. Jesus was raised from the dead. We were raised up with Him, justified in the Spirit, made alive in the Spirit. But listen, He ascended into heaven, and He as a forerunner ran into the presence behind the veil, a place nobody else could go in the Old Covenant. We can go in Christ because of the finished work and the shed blood of Jesus. And listen, what did He do when He finished that work and put His blood on the Holy of Holies? He sat down at the right hand of of God the Father in heaven. And you know what? We were made to sit together in Him. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, it says, And being the brightness of His glory, and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself, no help from us, we couldn't help. He says, When He had by Himself purged our sins, past tense, your sins have been purged, done away with, He sat down, at the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. We've looked at all these before, by the way. Hebrews 10, 11 and 12, and it says, And every priest stands daily, uh, or stands ministering daily, and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. That's the old covenant. But listen, but this man, under this new covenant, after, I love that word, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Now notice, remember, Jesus didn't do this for himself. He came out of the presence of God in order to bring us into the presence of God. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 once again. Hebrews chapter 2, verses uh, 50, or 5 and 6. Let me get over there real quick. Hebrew, uh, or excuse me, did I say Hebrews? I think I meant Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. I meant Hebrews. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 5 and 6. It reads this way. Even when we were dead in trespasses, that's the way we were, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. There's the grace of God in action. Verse 6. And He raised us up together. Remember, He made us alive. 
He raised us up together. And what did he do? And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How can we take that heavenly seat at God's right hand? The only reason is our sins have been purged, done away with, like they never existed. Condemnation, all done away with. Punishment, all taken care of. Finished work. We enter into the rest of God, to the presence of God, and we take that heavenly seat without any sense of guilt, inferiority, or condemnation. That is the righteousness of God that we have in Christ Jesus. And again, we're going to be looking at that even more in the coming weeks on grace and faith. So stay with us on that. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow as we kind of pick up on some specific things about the great exchange and how that pertains to our life. If you'd like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We will see you tomorrow.